Hello, purpose of this video is to review an IB uh, supposedly exam style question related to related rates. Um, now, this, uh, this text is really helpful, but uh, the notion of this being an exam style question for IB exams is a little bit off. Um, what, I su what I suggest is the problem itself is inspired by IB style problems because there's a lot of different elements of the curriculum embedded within the solution. But if this was an IB exam, they would not give you the question like this. In my opinion, and maybe I'm wrong, but I would, I would expect that uh, what they would do is um, give you multiple steps underneath that will eventually get you to figure out the rate of change uh, between P and uh, R. Um, you know, and so forth. In other words, be able to answer the question ultimately, but only after you've answered all their sub-questions. This problem is, is self-contained, and you're supposed to just know what to do, which is a little challenging in its own right. So I'm going to enlarge the picture and try to understand it a little bit better. And uh, here's what I end up with. Uh, well, I can write that. Uh, is that this angle theta is a thing that's changing. So in other words, we're going round and round and round the Ferris wheel, and that changes the angle theta. Directly as a result of that, the distance between P and R changes. For example, if theta was pi, we would rotate halfway around the circle, and the distance from P to R would be the diameter, or 15 meters. Um, if, again, if we rotate 2 pi, then the distance between P and R would be 0, because they would be concurrent points. Now, later on, I have to figure out how fast is this line segment A, how fast is it changing at the exact moment when the rider is 5 above ground on the way up. So, in other words, the Ferris wheel is going this way, and at this exact moment in time, how far away is the rider from the operator, if you will? So, first of all, for sake of operation, I used A instead of PR, so that's just one fewer letters, and... Um, then I recognize that the distance a is in fact a variable and it changes, but it is a directly a function of theta. If I make theta bigger, a gets bigger, theta gets smaller, a gets smaller. So I see there's already a connection. And then I recall that I'm in an isosceles triangle where I have the side angle and side known, and I have the side opposite the angle is the side I need. That's a perfect candidate for, you guessed it, the law of cosines or the cosine rule a squared plus b squared. So a squared equals c squared plus b squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. And then the law of cosines is minus 2ab cosine of c. Um, so the letters are irrelevant. It's the relative positions of the pieces. I'm going to do a little bit of cosmetics here because what I've done is I've actually almost expressed a as a function of theta. If I clean it up a little bit, first I make the observation that uh, this square or 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared is 2 times 7.5 squared. Then I observe that 7.5 squared is a common factor. You might say, hey, 2 is a common factor as well, but there's for various reasons that you might see, I kept the 2 on the inside. This is maybe what you'd see. That is to say, uh, if I take the square root of both sides to find the value of a, usually it'd be plus or minus, but we're talking about a positive distance. And uh, here we have 7.5 squared, square rooted. See, I took the square root of that, and then I took the square root of this stuff. I didn't take the 2 out before because it's not a perfect square. Leave it inside. Okay, so that's done. That's great. Um, now, what we have to remember about this function is a is dependent on theta, as we just discussed. But theta is dependent on time. As you can see in the problem, you're actually given um, how fast the, the uh, Ferris wheel goes around. It said something to the effect of uh, what is it again? Uh, two revolutions per minute. There it is. Two revolutions per minute. So, in other words, the distance A depends on the angle, and the angle depends on how long the ride has been operating. If that's the case, there's a chain of dependency here. I'm going to apply the chain rule. That is, the derivative of A with respect to time is equal to the derivative of A with respect to theta times the derivative of theta with respect to time. I know I'm looking for dA dt because it said how fast is the distance changing. So A is the distance and t is the time. Distance over time is speed. Anyway, bottom line is I now have a function for A in terms of theta, but I'm going to differentiate A in terms of time, which is involving the chain rule. So first I write the radical as a power or as an exponent, and uh, then I apply the chain rule 
twice. It's double chain. So again, first of all, I'm going to multiply 7.5 times a half and then drop the power 1 half by 1 so it becomes negative 1 half. Then I'm going to take the derivative of 2 minus 2 cosine of theta, which is 2 sine of theta, and then I'm going to take the derivative of theta with respect to time. So that's the double chain. A little more cosmetics, just to make it look nice. There it is. So now I have a relationship, direct relationship between dA dt and d theta dt. So I can find the rate of change at the distance of the rider to the ground using this formula. Now, the formula has a couple of little pitfalls. Number one, we need to know what d theta dt is, and it's connected to this. We also need to know what theta is, and that's connected to the fact that she, the rider, is five meters above the ground and going up. That's right here. So let's take a look at this picture with the relevant information. The first thing I observe is the distance from here to here is five, and therefore the distance from the center of the circle down to where the rider's level is, is 2.5. I look at my formula for dA dt, and I see that there's a cosine of theta in it. So it behooves me to know what the cosine of theta is at the moment when the rider is 5 feet above the ground. So when the rider is 5 feet above the ground, I draw this right triangle, and I can see the relationship between the cosine of theta and then the adjacent and opposite, or hypotenuse legs. So in other words, the cosine of theta is going to be 1 third. Theta is going to be the arc cosine of 1 third. Great. So that's going to help me. When I see the cosine of theta, all I have to do is put in one-third. Cosine of theta equals one-third. What I see here, though, is the sine of theta, and that's troubling. How do I find the sine of theta when I know the cosine of theta? And hopefully you can remember something from Trey. Here we have theta equals the arc cosine of one over square root of three, that or one over three. That means one over three is in the right triangle. We can reverse Pythagorean theorem to find square root of eight as the other leg, now I can figure out the sine of theta is the sine of the arc cosine of one-third, which is eight, square root of 8 over 3. You might want to take some time to pause this uh, to figure out what I did, if, unless you've, you're really comfortable with this idea. But if you know the cosine of an angle, then you know the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle all the time, all the time. So anyway... Now I have the sine of theta is the square root of 8 over 3, so I've got that part covered. I've got the cosine of theta is 1 third, so I've got that part covered. All I need to do now is figure out what d theta dt is, and we're going to have to be careful here because, first of all, we're talking about distance in meters, so that's going to be a as described in meters. And then time, when we have meters as our distance, then usually we have seconds because meters per second is a standard unit of speed. Meters per minute and meters per hour exist, but they're not commonly talked about. So what I have to do is take d theta dt and go from two revolutions per minute into seconds. So I use the dimensional analysis conversion um, so that two revolutions per minute equates to one thirtieth of a revolution per second. And then if I multiply that by two pi radians per revolution, so that is there's two pi radians in a revolution, we can translate our d theta dt as to pi over 15 radians per second. Substituting all our known values then, the sine, uh, the cosine of theta respectively, and d theta dt, the rest of this again, mathematical cosmetics, but this turns out to look terrible, but turn out to be really quite clean. Uh, again, pause the video if you want to, but I got it all worked out to be pi over the square root of 6. So at the exact moment when the rider is 5 feet above the ground, the distance from R to P will be moving at a rate of pi over the square root of 6 meters per second. It turns out to be about 1.28 meters per second, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, then what's important here is the process. So a quick overview of, um, of related rates here. One of the first things you need to do is identify what's, what, what's the thing that's changing. And then you try to write an equation that has that changing variable as its focus or exists in some way. Take the derivative with respect to time of that function and then look for all the different pieces of your derivative within the given information because seek and you will find. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.